Hello everyone, welcome to BISP Solutions. I am Tanvi Arora, working here as a functional consultant. So in today's video, we are going to see the case scenario of intercompany transaction matching in Oracle ARCS. So with the help of transaction matching, companies can automate the preparation of high volume labor intensive reconciliations and seamlessly integrate those results into the tracking features within reconciliation compliance. This powerful new module will save the company's additional time on the performance of reconciliation while improving the quality and reducing the risk. So let us see what is exactly intercompany accounts reconciliation is. Intercompany accounts reconciliation is basically when two branches of the same company or two subsidiaries of a parent company or a subsidiary get into a transaction of buying and selling of a product or a fixed asset or maybe just transaction of a liability or something like that. When any transactions happen between the two entities of the same parent or between two branches of a single company and hence that is the reason the accounts receivable and accounts payable needs to be reconciled. So one entity would be providing the product and the other entity would be paying for it. And so today we will be reconciling intercompany accounts of two entities that is two branches of the same entity and the reconciliation account ID that will be uh, that I will be using is 303 INCO. So let's just go to our application. So this is the home page of my application and um, I will go to uh, profiles. So I have already created a profile for uh, intercompany transactions. So the profile ID is 303INCO, uh, name is intercompany 96 and uh, entity, the other name of the entity is 87. Then uh, this is the reconciliation of entity 96 payable to uh, entity 87 receivables. So one is AP and one is AR. The process is balance sheet, risk rating is medium, account type is intercompany receivable and then the organization unit is North America. For MAT, uh, I have chosen uh, TM intercompany 1. So like uh, I will show you my format also but uh, let's just first complete the overview of this profile. Then in the workflow tab, I have uh, selected the name of the uh, preparer, then my reviewer and I have uh, provided for the offset days then the durations. Currency I have chosen as a functional USD and the rate type is accounting. So I have already created this profile and the format that I have used is TM Intercompany 1. This is my format. So this is my format. The name is uh, TM Intercompany 1 and it is the transaction matching format. So uh, the only different element in this format is this match type that I have selected. I have prepared this match type already. So uh, it is only the different element in my transaction matching module apart from my reconciliation compliance module. So basically ARCS comes with dual module feature where I can also just match and reconcile the balance part and also I can reconcile each and every transaction along with my balance so that I'll get a dual check on accuracy of matching the transactions as uh, invoice ID, date and everything and also the balance shall be matched. So here the match type that I have select used is intercompany. Match type if you say it is the additional element in transaction matching module. If I put it like that, uh, like you create a profile on the base of a format, but in transaction matching, there is one more element added to my profile creation and reconciliation. Like uh, in transaction matching, I create a profile on the basis of a format and a format is created on the basis of match type. So from here, I will be able to see what is the match type uh, that I have used. Uh, this is the intercompany match type. Okay. And uh, the other things are uh, same like uh, the, it was in the first module. So here I'm using the first method that is balance comparison with the transaction matching because I'm going to compare the two data sources of the uh, two in, uh, intercompanies basically. So this is my format. I have already created this and now I will go to match type and uh, we'll uh, go through an overview of the match type. So this is the match type that I have created. Now uh, I will change the status uh, to pending for any, uh, ed uh, like if I want to edit anything. So I will just save this. 
Now this match type has got five tabs. I will just go an overview, uh, go through an overview of all these tabs. So this is the basic properties tab as in the name, ID, description and everything. Then is the data sources. So data sources, if you actually take it in a very simple language, when I open my accounts payable, uh, what are the columns that I will be looking into my accounts payable book and the accounts receivable book? Um, like uh, my accounts payable book, it is going to have a date, invoice column, AP amount column, inverse amount column, currency column, document column. So these are actually those attributes similar to what I maintain in my Excel sheets. If I open an Excel sheet uh, of my company of accounts payable, it is going to have nine to 10 columns. So if I just put it out here, because on these bases only, any one of the source attribute bases, you are going to match the transactions because if you need to match the transactions, you will have to take a base. So we'll look into it uh, in the third tab. So this is my accounts payable attributes. These are total attributes that are uh, there in my Excel sheet as well. And if I open the accounts receivable one, so these are the attributes of my accounts receivable book. Um, of course, there's no way where uh, both the number of attributes under both the data sources will be same as it is an intercompany. So both the branches can have their own way of maintaining the books. Uh, let's say the date of payment for accounts payable will be an additional column in um, accounts receivable. It might have a different date. It may have a different column, the location, time, or it can have different ways of maintaining the things. So the number of columns may not be same or they can be same in both the books. Okay. So in this, uh, here are 10 attributes and in my AR book, uh, it has eight attributes. Now the third type is my transaction types. As in uh, what kind of transaction types I'll be matching. Like this is the basic transaction type adjustment. Okay. So uh, this is the adjustment as in if my amount or both the invoices are uh, if my amount of both the invoices are not matching, then what are the headings under which I'm going to create the match? Okay. Uh, let's say accounts payable book has $100 and accounts receivable book shows uh, $105. So if I have, uh, I can have a discrepancy or difference of maybe coding error or maybe an invoice difference, maybe a currency exchange difference, which is called currency flux. So if I am just putting a main heading uh, under which uh, I am going to put my adjustments. Okay. Yeah. So these are the um, adjustment types that I have created. This is the default one. Okay, uh, this is the default adjustment. Just a second. Okay, so these are the um, adjustment type attributes. Then the other heading is the dispute one. Okay, so it can it also contains the attributes. Now uh, these attributes are chosen from the global attributes that are present in the application itself. The name, ID, description, category, ledger ID, adjusting debit amount. So these uh, attributes will be used for providing the adjustments to the journals. Okay, then um, currency flux. Okay, this is the currency flux due to um, the difference uh, due to the currency exchange rates between the two books, and uh, Whatever difference doesn't fall in these three categories will fall under the other category. So this is the third tab. So this is my match process. Under uh, match process, I'm going to define the base for my match, like on which basis, uh, like on which account amount or uh, the in, um, invoice number or anything, I'm going to match my transactions of the two books. Like here, the default attribute mapping as in, uh, if I say in a way, I'm going to match is, uh, my amount and my date. Uh, so in the default attribute mapping, uh, in my AR book, um, the uh, it is here the amount and in my AP book, I will compare my inverse amount with the amount of AR book and the date is there, okay? And I can add other attributes to this as well. So it totally depends on the company or the organization. So this is the fifth tab and it is the journal entry attribute. Like I am, uh, if I'm going to have adjustments, this is my way of adjusting the amount, like the ledger ID, date, journal source, currency code, the entity, reconciliation ID, ca category, adjusting debit amount or a credit amount. So it is just for the adjustments. You can have attributes depending on your organization. So this was my match type. Now uh, let us just go directly to my profile.
so i have already created that profile and uh, i have already uh, like created the reconciliation as well so i have selected this profile and from here in the actions tab i have created the reconciliation for this particular profile and uh, it is for the period of december okay so after creating the reconciliation i will uh, go to the job section and import my balances so here in the job section and in the transaction matching you can see that i have already imported the balances in this uh, so the process of importing the transactions are go to actions then in the import transactions select your match type correct match type so i will select my match type from here my match type was intercompany this is my match type and the format of the date is this uh, so my excel files the headings uh, of the excel file should be in the same format okay and also the date should be in the same format so uh, this is my accounts payable and this is my accounts receivable file so i will uh, just upload my balances into this so this is for ap this is for ar so as you can see the balances have been um, imported into this and also i'm going to show you my uh, excel sheet so this is my accounts payable excel sheets these are the column headings uh, that are there the additional heading is this reconciliation account id so this is the uh, name of the profile uh, the unique uh, id that we have provided to our profile uh, 303 inco and then i have already created the reconciliations for the period of december so i am importing this file for the period of december itself as you can see it has the uh, reconciliation account id date invoice inverse amount payment date okay and similarly i will show you my accounts uh, receivable file so this is my accounts receivable book now both the uh, files has different different attributes so one has like five headings the other one has four headings so uh, it can be different with each other so this is the um, accounts receivable column headings and the amount that will be imported now we'll go to our application again i'll submit this so as you can see the status is pending i will keep refreshing uh until it gets succeeded so now the uh, balances have been files have been imported now the next step is to go to the matching card so uh, this is my profile as you can see that this is for the period of december and uh, then it's showing me uh, the suggested matches here basically these are the suggested matches and uh, the difference uh, like these are with the adjustments so uh, one was with the uh, currency flux and the other was was for uh, because of the disputes so it's showing me in the suggested matches uh, total are two and uh, these are with the adjustments so as you can see that uh, Uh, according to the rule that i have put into my uh, match type uh, this was the rule that one to one with tolerance and amount so like it has uh, provided me in the suggested matches so um, i can see that this is my invoice number it is same the amount it has a slight difference okay so uh, this slight difference is of uh, 0.30 so what i'm going to do i'm just uh, going to provide an adjustment for this id i can uh, give as the invoice number only name is not compulsory and then i will confirm this the other difference is of uh, again uh, this is of 2.77 rupees okay so i'm going to provide it uh, the adjustment for it okay
now i am left with uh, no suggested matches i have confirmed all the matches i have no unmatched transactions and these were the total transactions so these were the rules that i have put into my match type uh, so for these two transactions it was one to one exact match and uh, i have run the auto match rule uh, uh, rule as well and these were the confirmed uh, like uh, these were in the suggested matches which i confirmed it just now so this is the complete process now i have no unmatched transactions and it is just tallied so that's it for today thank you